Hey, I'm Clint. This is a 2022 Intec RV Flyer Discover. I just got it pretty fresh from the dealership and it has a standard lead acid battery in it. That may not be enough power or capacity for the type of camping that I wanna do with my, uh, my wife and kids. So let's find out what's in it and see if there's a need to upgrade. Okay, here inside the Flyer Discover, the, uh, we're at the front of the trailer. This is the kind of kitchen area. They have, you know, it's a little two burner stove and sink and all that. Uh, 12 volt fridge, sorry, I bumped into the cylinder. 12 volt compressor style fridge, which is really efficient. Once they're cooled down, they cool down fast, they cool down pretty efficiently and then they hold it, but they always draw off of that 12 volt power. They don't run directly off of shore power. It always runs through the 12 volt system. So with a standard lead acid battery, if it's not big enough, if it doesn't have enough capacity, it can draw down pretty good overnight, maybe even kind of lower than you want it to be for the battery's health overnight. So let's find out what's in this trailer from the dealership. Um, manufacturers oftentimes don't, most of the time don't supply a battery with the trailer. That's usually the dealership that gives you your first battery with the purchase. And if you want to upgrade it, then you just pay the dealership for a higher capacity battery. This one has the basic one that came with the trailer at delivery. Let's find out. The battery compartment is back here, um, underneath this kind of wardrobe area. There's a water tank down there, but there's also the battery. You're going to see that it's sealed off because it's designed for standard lead acid battery, and those have to be vented to the outside. So let's take a look, see what we find under there. All right, let's take a look under here. And there you go. There you have it. Water tank, a closed battery case. Let's see if I can focus on that a little bit better. And you'll see it is screwed shut and vented to the outside because they designed it for standard lead acid. You always need those vented to the outside. So let me go ahead and get a screwdriver here in a second and see if we can take that lid off and see what we find. Okay, we got the lid off and let's see with this if we can get our eyes on this it's an interstate battery um looks like a dual purpose 24 group lead acid battery let's uh let's get this thing out of here see what else we can learn that looks like two fuses here one going to the uh, 30 amp shore power service and one going to the external solar port which is wired Ooh, back up in there let's see if we can see it Oh, it's, it's actually on the other side of that tube right there. There. Um, it's actually good quality looking stuff in here. So let me, uh, let me get this battery out. Yep, there it is in all of its glory. A standard run-of-the-mill, kind of what you, you can expect to get with a trailer purchase from a dealership. It's a starter battery. Uh, Marine RV, dual purpose. The interstate batteries is pretty common. Um, Group 24. Um, marine RV batteries oftentimes kind of fall in similar category or, or oftentimes pull dual duty. Reserve capacity, it says 100. So to me, that means that it's um, 100 amp hour. But 100 amp hours is not usually a true 100 amp hours when it comes to a lead acid battery. So kind of a rule of thumb that I've heard when it comes to a standard lead acid battery or an AGM battery or something like that is that though it may say um, a certain capacity, it'll usually be something more like half of that is usable. Um, I don't know why, I'm no engineer, no electrical engineer. This is just uh, something rule of thumb that I've heard and picked up on. And, and it, I think it has something to do with the health of the battery and how much, uh, how much power it can continuously push to at a, at a strength that is good for all the components, whether it be your fridge or your, um, I don't know, your stereo or what have you. So uh, again, I am not in the category of electrical engineers or even close to that. So either way, I see a hundred hour amp hour battery and I can figure that I'm only going to get a about 50 amp hours worth of healthy use out of it before I start causing harm to the battery or the connected components. Sounds good, but that's using one amp per hour. Even this really efficient refrigerator uses a little bit more than one amp per hour. The stereo, when it's not playing, uses 
you know, a nominal draw. It's always continuous drawing. Any of the monitors in here, they're connected, whether it be the um, carbon monoxide detector or something like that, all those things still take a constant draw that adds up to more than one amp hour per hour, one amp use per hour. So it does run down overnight. If I just want to run off the battery in this trailer overnight, I can expect to be too low um, by the time the sun comes up the next morning. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a bigger, better, better battery solution into this trailer. Okay, so the plan for this trailer is to upgrade to one of the lithium options. This one is a VPR Forever Platinum battery from Xbeon 360. Um, man, they make a really stout product and they support it really well. This battery has a 12 year warranty and that's pretty dang good, you know, I think. It has a built-in battery um, management system. So there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot, a lot of technology built into this battery. I thought it was a pretty great product. Anyways, um, it is rated at 120 amp hours. And when it comes to lithium ion batteries or lithium um, category batteries like this one, you'd really get close to 100% of the capacity mentioned. So whereas with the interstate battery, which is a standard lead acid battery, you can expect to get, hmm, out of 100 amp hour battery more like 50 this one at 120 you can get probably close to that 120 um and they charge faster so they charge faster they're more efficient you get more use out of them i thought it was a good way to go because the way i like to camp with my family and all that is to hit some of the national forests and things and i fine i can take an inverter generator but i don't always like to run it i like here in nature and i like just kind of rolling in and enjoying the time there and rolling out just as best as we can. So I figured this was a good way to go. Before we get going much further, um, I need to mention that when you're doing a change from a standard battery to a lithium ion style battery, um, you're gonna need to pay attention to how you're charging it. Until recently, RVs were coming out with your typical charging centers and they were designed for lead acid or AGM style batteries. You would have to change this whole unit out if you wanted to move to lithium ion. Now we have, I think this is a progressive industries. I'd have to check the stickers, but I'm pretty sure that's right. It's actually designed, the sticker says so. It's designed to where I can flip a switch basically, and it will appropriately safely charge the lithium ion battery. Let me see, I'm not sure if that'll focus. I just held it up there. I didn't see the screen, so I don't know if it focused. But anyways, that made this a much easier install. I didn't have to do much else. Um, I'm going to wire up the new battery, flip the switch, and then it'll be pretty much installed. But that's not all. I can't monitor this battery. This particular trailer didn't come with a good battery monitoring system. So I have a battery monitor. This one is from GoPower. And we'll open it up here in a little bit, take a look at it and see if I can get that installed as well. I guess let's uh, get started with moving batteries around and things like that. I'm going to start by turning off this battery disconnect to the off position. Off, okay. And then um, that effectively completely disconnects the battery from the trailer. Um, I've known a lot of people that will just go ahead and get started working. I'm usually one of those people, but this is a video that's gonna be out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and also disconnect the power from the trailer because that's one step of safety more and it's worthwhile to do so. So um, in this case, I don't know, the whole do as I say, not as I do. Well, I'm gonna to try to do it myself this time too. I'm gonna to disconnect the power from the trailer as well. And then we'll get started with uh, putting the new battery.
Okay, I know that switch is somewhere in there, but I can't see with my uh, eyes. I don't really know what I'm looking for, so uh, Google to the rescue. Here's a manual on my phone. It's too blown out. So let's go ahead and switch this camera down to something that might be able to use. Okay, and then we'll see if we can focus. There we go. So that's a picture of the unit. And you'll see way down here in the bottom of the schematic, or it's not schematic, of the picture, is this little bitty switch. So it's going to be way down here. So, and it says, it looks something like this. And it's in the off position from the factory, but it needs to be moved to the on position. Let's see what it says here. Output mode switch. Shown in lead acid position. Toggle to on position to use with lithium batteries. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go look into that lower portion of the unit and find that little switch that you see right there. I'm about to put that battery back and I noticed that here in the bottom of the battery uh, case for the old lead acid battery that we took out, they had venting in the bottom through the bottom of the trailer as well. Well, I don't need that there because the lithium ion battery doesn't need venting and it's actually not good for a lithium ion battery to be exposed to freezing temperatures. So I want to kind of plug that up. So what I think I'm gonna do is maybe grab an old um, exercise mat and see if I can cut it to size and just kind of make a little floor in there that will kind of cover up that hole and protect the battery a little bit from cold air coming through that vent. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now. I'll try to get a better fit of some sort later. Might come up with some better ideas. This doesn't need to be sealed at all. It just needs to be protected from usual bouncing around and cold weather. All right, and there it is. I have a lithium ion battery down below. I have switched over the converter to charge specifically for lithium ion battery just by flipping that little switch, itty bitty switch that I couldn't hardly see. And let's see if I have any power when I switch the battery disconnect to the on position. Aha, lights. All right, so. There's that. What I don't have is a way to see how much charge my battery has right now. So that's the next component. Let's see what we have over here in this box. All right, in this box, I have the battery monitor from GoPower. Um, just the monitor itself. And of course, it looks like, um, I believe they call that a shunt, but I don't know. I'll have to look at the instructions. Um, I'm going to have to go online and see what the online manual says for installation of all these components. Then there's a wire that goes, I believe, and again, I'll have to check. That tells me I'm probably going straight to the battery terminal there. And then this will go to wherever. Look at all that cable. We could put that monitor almost anywhere in, this, in a trailer this size with that much cable. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a manual and see about that. I'm not really sure about where I'm going to put this thing. Um, I thought originally I'd put it down here with the other components, but there isn't really a good place down here to fit it. And I thought, okay, maybe I could put it above the refrigerator somewhere, but it's starting to, I don't know, get kind of busy all along from the wall on over. Don't really need it to be wired in too close to where the um, stove is and where the refrigerator is. So then I thought maybe I would put it somewhere along this wall. Then I noticed this space right up here where the there's basically open air behind this where there's wiring for the speaker and not much else. So maybe I'll see if I can port it in right about there. So I don't know. Let's uh, see what I can do. I started to drill and I forgot to turn on the camera. Here we go. I have an apology to make. I should have been wearing eye protection this whole time. Um, 
something I need to get better about doing, but if you're going to take on a project where you are cutting or grinding or anything like that, drilling, eye protection. So, sorry about that. Let's move forward. You may have picked up on, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm a hack, but my saw didn't have clearance around the bezel of the speaker. So I had to take the speaker out because I can't get this top part cut because it was running into it. I just couldn't get the saw close enough. So here we go, last few little bits and then, uh, then we should be able to see if it fits. Here's where it's going to be, or where it is now. I don't have it all connected yet. There's a cable that plugs into the back and I have the speaker back in place. So it's going to be working right there. What I did is I routed the power cable. You can see it plugged out right there and it's going to go over the top. This is open air up here. And then I dropped it down into the space and then just kind of looped it around back in there and uh, hooked it up, but it is not connected to anything else on the, on the other end. I still have to go down there and take care of the other equipment. So let's go get after it. Project status update. It's significantly later. It's now mid afternoon, almost late afternoon. Uh, I took a break, family stuff and whatnot. And also um, the instructions said I needed to basically make a length of cable, take the old cable, cut off the end, whatever, get some distance, but I didn't have enough distance. I had to go run to various auto parts stores and whatnot, find, cable what i went with was some eight gauge cable and it's for the negative side of the battery and yet all they had was red which typically means positive so i made a length of cable and i got some you you might laugh at me i got some white heat shrink wrap which is the same color white as what you will see down there whoop on the negative side cable so that way, in the future, I am a little bit less likely to make mistakes by having a white cable. So there's a red jacketed cable inside there, insulated cable inside there. And now it's got a lot of money and shrink wrap on it. It looks pretty dang ridiculous, but I think it'll work. Okay, um, I'm not going to be mounting this thing just yet. I haven't really decided where I want to put that shunt in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it up for kind of proof of concept, and then I'll probably in, in this project for today there, so I can, you know, do dad stuff. All right, let's see how this goes. Might hear my son in the background. He's come outside. He was uh, needing to get outdoors. So that's the sound in the background, whatever he's playing with right now. Oh, our loop might be a little bit tight. The post here on the battery is perfectly sized for the eight gauge wire that they use, but it's not perfectly suited for the post on the shunt. Notice that the post on the shunt, yada, 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 wouldn't fit. So I had to take it, you may notice here, I had to widen one of them, you may not be able to see that. That way I could actually get this through here. So now we can try to wire up the components. All right, yet again, my son's out here playing, so uh, bear with the extra noise. All right. Now you may notice it's kind of like what the description shows here. Let me go check what my son needs. Sorry, it's uh, it's getting a little bit later in the day, and so obviously it's getting where my kids need a little bit more attention, which is fine. That's what I should have be, been doing already. So this is what I'm trying to do. You'll notice the uh, arrow direction here, and the shunt, and so I've connected the battery, and then I've gone out to the rest of the components. So. If I line them up kind of like that, you'll see that that picture 
largely lines up with that picture so far. What I'm missing is this little connection here from the positive side, and then this wire coming out here. Now that wire has already been connected to the back of the um, monitor, and it's way out here. It's such a long cable. So there it is. So it's ready to plug in here, but I'm gonna run this little connector cable there first, and then we should be in pretty good shape to test it. Again, I'm running out of time with my family, so I need to just basically get this into proof of concept kind of condition. The screw that this little, oh, look at camera, get this little wire end right here goes into is tiny, 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 tiny. So if you have got any of those a drawer full of little bitty screwdrivers that you keep on getting for Christmas and you don't know when the heck you're gonna use them, well, I went and found out the drawer, found one of those kits and today's the day. There we go, that's going to the shunt, it's screwed in, out into in, out to all the trailer components. Now I need to connect this long wire and we'll see if we can get somewhere with this. Again, this is not pretty, it's proof of concept at this point. I'm not good at this, but this is how you learn. Let's come up here to the top and whoa, where's the camera? Okay, let's go ahead and get this ISO down and maybe take that off. And there we go, look. Now, that doesn't seem to be showing me much, but if I go down here, I still have my battery disconnect off. Battery disconnect is now to the on position. And let's see. There we are. It's showing that we've got activity. Okay, so there's a fair bit of setup I need to do. I still need to go through some of the uh, basic setup area here. You know, hold OK button for three seconds, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Let me do that and then it'll have a better idea of what this kind of, what information this will show me. Um, other than that, I've got a big mess to clean up. Proof of concept is going to be hopefully in a good place and I'll come back out and um, clean up the trailer, set it up for camping again, and maybe even clean up some of the messy wiring that I created. So uh, a really good project, doable project. Yeah, it's very doable. Um, it's not difficult. It will take you a lot of time like it did me if you don't do this kind of stuff very often and if you may not know what tools you need. Um, so if you bumble around a bit, it's fine. Um, just make sure that you have the time and you've cleared it with your family and your small kids. I'll do better about that. I digress. I want to get this part set up. Well, it's, it's not a completed project because it's still quite a mess in here and... Um, I really don't want to tidy up the wiring and all that on anything to get snagged on whenever whenever I get down into those cabinets. But proof of concept day, um, it seems to work. And I'll show you the panel real quick. Um, there it is. It's kind of shiny. So I'm not sure if I like things so shiny. But there it is. Um, you'll see that this is showing. Come on now. with the. There's 120 amp hours, 100%. Um, it looks like it's, you know, got a nominal charge going into it and whatnot. So there it is. Um, what I did have to do was when I went in here, oh, there, it's speculate, and I set this capacity. I still haven't set my high and low voltage or alarm or anything like that. It works fine without me doing that. Um, but what I had to do was when I went back to this screen, it was still showing zero here, which was pretty annoying. So uh, I talked to... Uh, a uh, friend up at Princess Craft and I just had, and he told me to hold this up button for a few seconds and bam, 
I don't know why it's not in the instructions. I actually sent a picture of the last bit of the instructions to two. It's like, it's not there. So anyways, if you go, go through this and it's still, it shows it's charging, shows it's working, the battery can run everything and yet it still shows zero charge. Maybe hold that up button when you're on the home screen and let it reset to um, seeing that there's a battery on there and what, I don't know, whatever. So it works. Um, I'm excited. We're going to go camping in a few weeks, I think, and try it out.